Hi my loves, welcome back to the Stars Cartel channel. If you don't know, I am Star. The message I heard is be yourself. The scripture comes from Isaiah 11, 1 through 9. But a shoot shall sprout up from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a, bull, a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide. But he shall judge the poor with justice, and decide a right for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be a, the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the culvert's den. And the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as waters cover the sea. Okay, y'all, so with this message, I truly feel like for somebody, God has called you to uh, minister to people, to be kind of like counsel to people, to go around and touch people, to heal people. And you are kind of, um, God sent you to where he wants you to do this, and you're kind of trying to figure out how, and God is like basically saying be yourself. Like, um, that's all you have to do is be yourself. He chose you specifically because of who you are, because he knows that you're honest. He knows that you're fair. He knows that you're not one to kind of just, how do I say it? Like, you're not going to just, um, be mean to someone for no reason. You're not going to just be looking down on someone for no reason. You're not going to be, um, sticking your nose up in the air. You're not so arrogant and so snotty i like i don't even know how to say it but that's how i say it um you're you're the kind of person that if you see someone being wronged or if you see something going on that's that shouldn't be going on or that's not fair you would be um very fair in whatever ruling that you give or um whatever it is that you tell god at the end of the night you are going to put forth your best effort to be uh not only faithful to him, but just like God is saying, he really wants somebody like you can't be as fair as God and as just as God. But he wants you to be as close as possible because he doesn't want for what you have to do. Somebody that's going to be um, feeling some kind of way about everybody they come in contact with. Like um, he wouldn't be able to trust you to do what he wants you to do if you're going to be um like that long story short like um like i said it's like god is saying that he would not give you anything that is too much for you to bear um and you know if you ever need help he's only one phone call away like he's right there but um in reality he feels like you are the perfect person for the job you are the perfect person to get whatever it is that he's asking you to do done and you know nine out of ten he's asking you to save people to um save souls and to you know slay demons i hear for somebody god is calling you to go out and cast out demons from people and um it doesn't mean I think the biggest point about it is like it doesn't mean that you're going to have to you're going to always be around someone that you are similar to someone of the same race, somebody that acts the same way you do or someone that lives their life the same way you do. But you have to be as fair as possible. And, you know, um, I'm going to also say, God, uh, God is not going to send you to someone that um it's hard to say it like he's not gonna send you he may send you to someone that you see as like y'all don't exactly get along 
but he's not going to send you to somebody that has done something specifically to you or that like somebody where whatever they did is so bad that you wouldn't be able to fairly judge them you wouldn't be able to like that will kind of be counterproductive it will be counterproductive for him to send you to somebody and he knows good and well that you like it's just not gonna work but anyways um regardless god is saying that the people that he is sending you to these are people that you can help he knows you're not going to be judgmental he knows you're not going to be mean he knows you're not going to be stuck up he knows that your heart is genuine and you really do want to help people and that's why he wants to send you out and that's the message god is saying that he doesn't want any fighting too okay like I just... hold on um He shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as waters covering covers the sea. So I feel um, God is saying with these two scriptures, these two parts, that's nine and four, four and nine that while you will be slain you're not going to be slain like actually causing harm it's just getting rid like this is a spiritual war and because of that you're not going to be causing any harm and nobody is going to be causing any harm to you um your whole thing is to help and i assume that's why god told me about like it's not going to be somebody that has done something directly to you but it would be people that they've done nothing to you y'all have nothing against each other and there's no reason like you know um but god is trusting you with this because just because there's no reason for you to feel any kind of way you know some people are like that some people um will not like somebody just because of their hair their nails their clothes or just the artificial things the materialistic things that they see them as versus someone that you know has a genuine heart and extends they their hand their helping hand to anybody and yeah yeah that is the message okay and um the next point that god is sending me to in eight it says the baby shall play in the cobra's den and the child lay his head on the adder's lair god is saying that um this is not a situation where you will be caused any kind of harm. The leper shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together. God is saying that even if you feel as though you are around someone that could possibly hurt you or you feel like you're helping somebody that could cause you a lot of harm or what God is asking you to do is dangerous, God is saying that no, nobody's going to hurt you. Nothing's going to harm you. No kind of harm shall come to you. Um, because God is calling for you to make peace. Like, that's literally why God is... Sorry, y'all, some lint on my, on my lap. But um, that's literally why God put you there, is to make peace so that there will be peace. Because um, he put it up in you to bring peace. And um, he's been working on you and molding you to get you to this point to where you actively seek out to make peace like this is somebody you are very peaceful you are very um and that's not to say that you never get irritated or frustrated but all in all you're a very peaceful person and um you have been working on that for a while and god has put you in this place god has put you in this position to where you will be peaceful you will make peace you will make other people around you want to be peaceful and want to make peace and yeah let me see if there is anything else Okay, so 11 and 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. So God is saying that you have 
wisdom and understanding that he has gifted you. You have the spirit of counsel and strength and knowledge that he has gifted you. And for the most part, you have a fear of God. And I feel like the fear of God is like the strongest attribute out of all of those things. And that's simply because you fear God more than you fear anything else. Um, meaning even if you do feel scared or you feel nervous to do what God asks you to do, you are more scared of God than you are of what could happen to you. And um, yeah, you have been gifted with wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, and knowledge so that you can help people. You know, um, making peace is hard. Y'all, and this is coming from somebody like, y'all already know I used to have anger problems. I, um, been working on them. I would still say that I'm still a work in progress to this day. And it is so hard to peacefully end a dispute. Like, it is very difficult. Um, one thing that I've learned is to use my words more. But, um, a lot of times, especially when I was younger, it was hard for me to use my words because my tongue is twisted. Uh, when I get angry, I start talking fast. I start talking loud. And <laughs> um, me talking fast and loud with the twisted tongue means that my words are getting twisted up. I sound stupid. At least I would feel that way. I would feel like what I'm saying doesn't make any sense. Um me talking fast would mean that I'm not really thinking through what I'm saying. And it just would frustrate me to the point to where I'm just ready to fight. I don't even want to argue no more because I don't like how I sound. I'm even madder than I was in the first place because I feel like I sound stupid. <laughs> but that's me. But, um, yeah. Yeah. But I have learned that it's better for me to calm down okay first of all anytime i feel like um an argument may arise or um i may end up getting into it with somebody i kind of take a breather and calm down and i have also learned that especially with me having a twisted tongue it is smarter for me to listen to what someone else has to say make note of what i want to say and think about it and then say how I feel. And you know, um, I feel like this has helped me tremendously because it keeps me from saying anything that could hurt somebody and I'm not even intending to hurt them. It also keeps me from um, saying something that doesn't make any sense or uh, that's gibberish. It helps me to not um, twist up words the way I would with my tongue being twisted if I'm talking too fast. And, you know, um, for the most part, it would help the other person to be able to also calm down and listen to my response. And, you know, I have learned that I don't like it when nobody yells. I do not want nobody yelling at me. I cannot stand. I like I, I, I can't stand it when people yell at me. I don't want nobody raising their voice at me. I don't want nobody screaming at me. I don't like it one bit. And I know if I feel that way. I don't think other people want people yelling at them. And I'm saying that to say that I had to logically think like nobody is going to listen if you are yelling. Nobody is going to want to make peace if you are yelling. If everybody is screaming, it's just pissing everybody off. Everybody's mad now versus calmly speaking um, is harder, but it, if you care about the person that you're speaking to, which you should, you should love everybody, but especially if it's somebody close to you, you should care about them enough to say, you know what, I'm not going to scream at you. I'm not going to yell at you. I'm going to talk to you respectfully in a calm tone. And I just feel like it always solves problems tremendously. And it, it helps so much better than um, getting into an argument. Because typically, you know, now... I can ignore it, but an argument will be leading to hands being thrown. I don't like that. I don't like nobody screaming at me all up in my face. And oh no, 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 don't do me that. But anyways, that's the message, y'all. Okay, you are a peacekeeper. You are a peacekeeper. And you are a peacekeeper because you know how to make peace. You know how to um, help others get calm, remain calm. Um, 
it may seem a little scary because maybe there's some kind of war that was brewing in the area that you are in but god literally specifically sent you there to calm all that down that's the message thank you guys for watching be sure to like share and subscribe